Welcome church. Uh, this is 26th of April. Yesterday was Anzac Day, a quiet Anzac Day compared to the previous years, but uh, nevertheless, nevertheless we are here and uh, we got an awesome uh, service here lined up for you. We got a guest speaker who will be sharing with us in a moment, uh, but uh, I just want to say let's, uh, let's continue to, to, to fellowship, uh, as I said earlier, you know, online through whatever means uh, that you're doing that or through chat, phone calls. Please, please uh, the Bible says the fellowship of the saints. Christianity is a, a religion that is uh, uh, recognized for its fellowship and God desires fellowship. And I pray that even though at the moment you are unable to uh, come to church, uh, but uh, you are able to still fellowship. And, you know, in those days, uh, as I recall back during the early church, uh, sometimes they were persecuted. Christians couldn't meet together like we've done in the past, but still uh, they found a way to fellowship. And, and God loves us. God wants to fellowship with us, but also we need to fellowship with one another. Do not let uh, the COVID season uh, stop you from fellowshipping. Find a way to, to meet somebody, to give them a call, uh, do face FaceTime or Zoom. Whatever it is, and uh, let them know that uh, you care about them, you love them, and you value them. People like to be valued, each and every one of us. I try to do it in my own way. I, I make a couple of calls to different members of our congregation, and, uh, and I've been doing a couple of things. Uh, one of the things I've been doing is uh, I've been doing some pastoral visits. I've put out an SMS to all of you. Those of you who want a pastoral visit, uh, 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 please get in touch with me because I love to see you. I want to see you. I'm happy to come and have a cup of tea with you. Amen. And uh, just to see you. I'm longing to see you face to face. And uh, so please uh, take the opportunity, you know, uh, if you need somebody to talk to and uh, you want to have a chat uh, with me. And uh, I love, and also not only to see you, but uh, I want to pray for you. Pray God's blessing, God's goodness. And even if there's some need uh, that is in your life, uh, you need to be met. Man, I'm there for you. Amen. That's the role of a pastor. And uh, uh, that is what God has called us to. So please take the opportunity. I've already visited some of you in your homes and that was wonderful. Uh, I saw some, someone that I haven't seen for a whole month and uh, it didn't even run into them. But it's good to go to their home and uh, visit them and have a chat with them and uh, pray over them. Amen. And uh, so take the opportunity. Just want to announce uh, some of the things that are happening in Coastal Life so that uh, you, you are kept informed and, and uh, you know what. I, I had the privilege of uh, uh, last week, I had the privilege of baptizing uh, a young man, 18 years old man, uh, 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 in, a, in a home swimming pool. They had a swimming pool. Uh, what's amazing, you know, people are getting saved. You know, we are talking about COVID, but God is working in people's life. It's a young man. He wanted to know God. He wanted to get baptized uh, uh, and just receive the Lord. And so we took the opportunity uh, to go to his friend's home and, and do the baptism. And he's, he's gloriously saved and baptized. So I want you to believe God uh, for your friends or your family members. It's a great opportunity to share with them the gospel. And, uh, you know, sometimes when we are in lockdown, we got more time with our loved ones. Amen. Don't waste it. Share the love of God with them. Share the scripture with them and invite them to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Amen. If I can baptize some, someone during the COVID season, well, there are people out there that, uh, more people that need to know the Lord and, and to get saved. So that, that was awesome. That was, I was really blessed to have uh, the opportunity to bless this young man and, and to baptize, baptize them. Uh, second thing we are doing is we are doing our online Bible study and online prayer meeting. We've got a few groups that is formed. A few more of you will receive a personal invite from me to join some groups, to be a part of a group. Uh, because while, while we're under lockdown season, you know, we still want to have the fellowship Going. And I really encourage you, if you're not already a part of a Bible study group, you know, uh, just uh, uh, get involved. That's the only way. Probably an hour a week, uh, it will be done online through the Zoom platform. Uh, we encourage you. Amen. And as we meet on online, we, yes, we do the Bible study, but more than the Bible study is the fact that we get to fellowship, talk about how our day has been, our week been, what are we experiencing, also things like what is God speaking to us, and, uh, 
and getting rooted in the word of God as well. So I, I believe, I, I, want to, I don't know, it's coming back to me, fellowship is, is essential, amen? And uh, so we have Bible study, but we also have fellowship. And Tuesday nights, it's our online prayer meeting. Join us. We got about a dozen people who join us on, on, on uh, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. online uh, uh, prayer meeting. Come and join us if you can. And uh, if that, those of you who are watching me over online over the internet and you like to join us for any one of these, the bubble study or for the prayer meeting, hey, uh, go to our church website, coastalivechurch.com and say that you would like to join us and we will send you a link for you to come and, and to join us uh, either for the prayer meeting or for the Bible, Bible study, whichever it is. Amen. Uh, but really encourage uh, each and everyone, take the opportunity. Let us not allow COVID to stop us. Amen. Let us not uh, stop us from fellowshipping and uh, and it's a great season. It's a time that we can get to know one another in, in, in a different way, I mean, uh, not like meeting in person, but uh, yeah, nevertheless, we can do that. So uh, I'm really excited uh, at the moment, uh, you know, we, we are moving stuff out of the church and uh, we'll be completing that shortly. And then we are praying and believing God for a new place, uh, a brand new place, a fresh place and uh, an exciting place where we can hold service together. It might, you know, we might have to make a one or two transition before we get to our permanent place, but uh, we are working on having a, a service as soon as COVID is over. Uh, and uh, we are talking with a few people. So be encouraged when COVID is over, we'll gather together as a church. And I really long to see you. Hey, I think we'll, the first day we'll throw a celebration, you know. It will be a real get together after such a long, long time. And uh, So those are some of the things uh, that, uh, that's happening in, in our church at the moment. Uh, encourage you to be part of that. And uh, uh, today, just uh, before I go any further, you know, a verse of scripture that God uh, kind of put on my heart. And I just want to share it with you because uh, I believe it speaks to the season that we are in. And it speaks, uh, this is from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says, fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, as I, as I uh, you know, today one of the prevailing uh, uh, thing uh, in society is fear, uncertainty. Amen. Listen, uncertainty always brings fear. Amen. And that is normal. That that's being a human. And uh, uh, but even in this season of uncertainty, we've got. A God who is certain. Amen. He is certain. Yesterday, today, forever. Jesus is the same. Amen. Christ dwells in your heart. You know, the Bible says God is closer to us than the air that we breathe in. Man, that you can't get any closer than that. And God is with us in this season. You know, you can't say that for the people of the world. Amen. They got to kind of uh, depend on themselves, on the situation, the circumstances, the government to help them out, maybe, or, or business or work or whatever. Yeah, we, you know, we, in a certain sense, we, we have all these other human resources. But more important, as the scripture says, God is with us. Amen. Uh, the living God is us and he loves us and he's got a plan for our life and the scripture says that uh, he, 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 he is for us fear not for I'm with you God is with us amen do not be discouraged is there anybody out there you're feeling discouraged and discouraged because of uncertainty you know maybe you don't have any problem but you're discouraged because man I don't know what's going on I don't know when this thing will be over and oh I hope I hold on to my job or I hope my business go going, you know what I mean? The uncertainty created by this COVID season uh, is a real thing, you know, so let's not beat around, beat around the bush. It's a real thing. But uh, the most important thing is that uh, we have a God who tells us, hey, do not be discouraged. Amen? For I am your God. Do not be dismayed. Hallelujah. He, he, you know, he's saying he's offering us the right hand of fellowship. Amen. Don't worry. Don't worry about what's happening in the world. Don't worry too much about COVID. Yes, uh, COVID is there, but much more than COVID, I am here with you and I, and I, and I'm for you and I'll help you. Amen. And the Bible and, and the Lord says, I will strengthen you and I'll help you. Hallelujah. Hey, listen to me, people. Buddha does not say that. Krishna does not say that. 
Confucius is a bit confused. He definitely doesn't say that. Amen. Uh, yeah, God is not extending personal help. But our God is saying to us, I will help you and I will strengthen you. You know, some of you may be weak, feeling weak and, 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 and you know, uh, discouragement brings weakness, you know. And uh, hey, look to the Lord. He said he will help you. He will strengthen you. And the third thing here, it says, that I'll uphold you with my righteous uh, right hand. Amen. God says, hey, uh, you know, sometimes our hands are hanging loose because we are, when people are discouraged, they're like that. No, 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 no. But God says, I will lift up your right hand. Amen. I will lift up your, I, I will hold you up. God is holding you up in this season. Amen. The Lord God, he is holding you up. You're not holding up yourself. He, the living God, the creator of the universe, the savior who died for you, he's saying, I will hold you up. I will strengthen you. I will be, help you. I am with you. What more do we need? If the creator of the universe is with us on our side and is promising to do all these things, man, you and I can take courage. You can settle down. Amen. Yeah, there is problem. Yeah, there's difficulty. Yeah, uh, so situations are not what they used to be. And, and, and sometimes, you know, we, we, we are sitting there waiting for things to happen. But in the midst of it, God is with us. And I'm always reminded of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, they thrown into the fire. Man, that was a great trial. Amen. They could be burnt up and, and, and been smithereens or to ashes. And uh, hey, uh, those things happened. But uh, the Bible says, a uh, fourth man turned up. He looked like the son of God. Man, whatever you're going through, God is there. He's not going to turn up. Amen. For Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego, God had to turn up. But for us, he is with us. He's with you right now. Wherever you are sitting and watching this uh, uh, service, God is with you. He is in you. He loves you. He's got a plan for your life. He knows about COVID. He knows that COVID was coming before the foundation of the world. And he knows what to do with COVID. And even COVID, God will use it to your advantage. If you trust him, if you believe in him, if you look to him, hey, he'll make a way out for you. Hey, and as I look at uh, Isaac, as I shared last week, he can cause you to prosper in a land of famine. With God, nothing is bad. I just want to encourage you. I really want to encourage you. Because we all are, you know, most of us are like the rest of us, rest of us and we do get, you know, and uh, we do, you know. But, but the word of God, that's what I want to say to you. Go back to the word of God. Uh, read the word of God. Strengthen yourself in the word of God. The only thing that will hold you up in this season in the word of God, the promises of God. You know, my, uh, pe uh, my people who know me, they shall do great exploit. Amen? Uh, get to know God. And this season of COVID could be the exploit season for you. You may do something radical, maybe something supernatural, something that you never thought you could do. God can give you a, a creative idea. God can, can download something into your life. God can open the waters, separate the waters for you, for you to walk through and, and, and be a blessing and be blessed. I just encourage you that you are blessed already in heavenly places, but in this season, God can make a way for you be, to be blessed on the earthly places. Do not look to the government. Do not look to the economy. Most impo important of all, don't pay too much of attention to the media. They are fear mongers. Amen. Just uh, read the Bible. You know, get on your knees. Pray to the Lord. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You know, strengthen Strengthen yourself. And, uh, and, and, and that's what we need to do. But more important, the scripture that I read today, fear not, be not dismayed, for I am with you. I will help you. I will strengthen you. And I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. My God is with me. Can I say your God is also with you? He is with all of us. We, we are in good hands, church. We are in good hand because we are in God's hand. The only people who need to fear are the people who are not in God's sent. But we are good. We are doing well. Hallelujah. All will be well with us. So, so I, I just felt to uh, uh, give a short encouragement and encourage you and, uh, and just to look to the Lord. Amen. Just look to the Lord. Do not look at your circumstances, but look to the Lord for he is with you. He'll bless you and lead you and guide you. Right now we are going to go to a time of praise and worship.
Really encourage you. Don't be a, at home being a spectator. You know what I mean? God wants a participator. God is looking for a worshiper. Not some, God is not looking for somebody to see somebody else worship. You know, the opportunity is for you to worship. Uh, you know, do what you would do in Sunday morning in church. You know, you'll get up and you praise and worship God and, and give him glory. Amen. And I really encourage you today. Do not miss an opportunity to worship God. For some of you, it's only on Sunday morning that you worship God. I, I'm pretty sure of that. Some of you don't worship God uh, during the week in terms of singing and worshiping. But at least this time, this Sunday morning, hey, let our praises reach heaven. Let it touch heaven. It will open heaven up. Amen. The light and the glory of God could shine down on your home, on, upon your head, right where you are, wherever you are seated right now. God looks to your heart. Amen. And, and I just encourage you, hey, let's, let's press in. Amen. Let's not be slack. It's easy to be slack, you know. Very easy to be slack. Nobody's watching. Nobody knows what I'm doing. You know, you can do that. Hey, but can I tell you, God is watching and he loves your worship and he wants you to worship. That's the only thing there. Let us, uh, right now, we're going to, we got some great music and uh, uh, let us worship God with these awesome songs.
This is a song I wrote with my good friend, Aaron Schust. Yeah. Welcome to Jerusalem, brother. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, the sun comes up. It's a new day dawn, it's time to 
that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And through it all, through it all, it is well. And through it Good morning, everyone. Yesterday was Anzac Day, April 25th, 2020. 
And unfortunately, we were not able to celebrate the way that we usually do at the cemitaphs and in the parks all around our local districts. And as I stood in my driveway yesterday morning at 6 a.m. with a candle lit, I looked up and down my street and I saw men and women, I saw children, I saw a returned soldier in his uniform, all standing there with their candles, just like I was, remembering our fallen heroes, remembering the diggers of Australia, remembering those brave men and women that gave up their lives so that we might enjoy the liberty and freedom that we have now in this country. But not only men, there were women too that gave up their lives. There were women that served in that great army and they fought for our freedom. And today, we as Christians are good soldiers of Christ and we fight for the souls of men. We fight for our families. We fight for our friends. We fight for our neighbours. But above all, we fight for the cause of Christ, our healer, our redeemer, our counsellor and our great God. And Jesus fought on that cross for us. Jesus surrendered his place in heaven so that we might have a place with God the Father because we were so far removed from the Father that it took a soldier of the faith, Jesus Christ, to come and redeem us and bring us back to God. All power and glory and honour and blessing belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and his name is Jesus Christ, our hero. So let's stand together and take the bread and take the cup and we'll pray. And we thank you, Father, that you sent your lovely son, Jesus, so that we could come back and be restored to you. Jesus, we thank you for surrendering all that you were in heaven to come down and redeem mankind we thank you for your body that was broken on that cross. We thank you for your blood that was spilt. We thank you that you did it all for us without a moment's hesitation. And we thank you and bless you for it. You are our God. You are our King. And today we celebrate your goodness. We celebrate who you are and what you've done for us. We celebrate you, Jesus. We love you and worship you and adore you. And all that we are, we give to you. All that we ever hope to be, we give to you. But above all, we give you our praise. We give you our heartfelt thanks that you've done what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, uh, we're, going to come, we're coming to the time of tithe and offering. I just want to thank each and every one of you who's been giving diligently to the work of the Lord. I don't see it, but the Lord sees it, and the Lord who sees in secret will bless you openly, reward you. And I just want to thank you today, and uh, we're going to take up the tithe and offerings, and, uh, you know, we've got the different means, you know, they put up that slide there. Uh, however you choose to give, uh, we leave that to you. But we want to thank you. And uh, I just want to pray a prayer of blessing. Father, I thank you, my God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that uh, nobody gives your servant or the church, the kingdom of God, a cup of water that they will not fail to receive the reward. And Father, according to your word, I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing each and every person who's participating in tithe and offerings. Father, as they give, Lord, we Thank you that you are giving it back to them. I thank you that they're multiplying the seed that is being sown. I thank you, Lord, that their barns will be full, Lord. Their cupboards will be full. They will not uh, lack uh, any good thing. Father, I thank you that you'll meet every bill, Lord, that's coming to that home or to that individual. Bless them, Lord. Let them have and receive supernatural, supernatural finances, Lord, that things will be met supernaturally. And therefore, we thank you, God. You are Jehovah Jireh, our 
pro provider. We thank you for your provision in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, Coast Live Church. Uh, it's a great honor to be here to share what's upon my heart, and I thank Pastor Patrick and Leah for letting me have this opportunity to come and talk to you again. Uh, I love this church. I love your pastors, and being able to share with you what's happening in our life and your life together as we navigate this, this time where we've been in a new season, a new stage, and uh, who knows what's going to be like. But I, I think Scripture always gives us a way through to the answers of when there's an opportunity that comes in our life which we're struggling with. We turn to Scripture to find out what God did through His patriarchs, or through His Spirit. And uh, so today I'm going to talk to you about the cave of lockdown. You know, David was caught in a cave, and it was called the Cave of Bellum. And he was caught there. He had to go there because he went there out of fear, because something was chasing him. Matter of fact, the authorities were chasing him. And uh, I've never been chased by authorities other than my mother. And I remember I used to run and hide from my mum, because she was an Italian mum, and I love her to still do. She's in glory now. And if she got me, I was in big trouble, because I caused uh, a lot of things that uh, I shouldn't have done as a young boy. And mum would chase me, so I'd hide in certain places. So I'd be locked in a few times. But I think one of the most serious lockdowns I've been in is uh, during cyclones. Uh, I lived in North Queensland in, in Tully, and uh, often hit by cyclones there. And when it had a direct hit on us in the town, I was uh, informed by mum and dad, stay in the house, stay in the safest part of the house, because we've got to see through this time with the lockdowns on. But we always knew that after a storm, there was freedom. And so we had to prepare ourselves for the lockdown. We had our uh, batteries, we had food, we had water. In case we went for a bit longer, if the floods were going to destroy things. So we knew to prepare ourselves before it so that we could go through the time. So preparation is important to a time of lockdown. I looked at um, in John chapter 20, verse 19. Uh, interesting statement here. When, when the apostles are running away after Jesus' death, and it says here in, in verse 20, it says, Then the same day at evening, the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Some people locked themselves down out of fear. And that's sad, because uh, the Word of God gives us no place to actually have fear. He says, Do not be anxious for anything, but in all things by prayer and supplication. Let your requests be known, be known to God. You know, the church has got an opportunity to witness to many people. Why? Because uh, we live in a place of faith. We know that God's got the future in our hands. Matter of fact, He's got the future and the past and the present. He's a God of outside of time. So He knows what's going to happen, and we've just got to sit comfortable with Him. But here were the apostles out of fear of people from persecution, locked themselves down and didn't know what was going to happen. They were in a place of fear. I pray that's not happening to us. This coronavirus is telling the world what to do, smashing the economy, causing people to fear, think they're going to, they could get it, isolating themselves from family assemblies, from church. Wow, how devastating. Matter of fact, heard an interesting statistic this week. Uh, the Americans were asked, what was the thing they wanted to do as soon as the lockdown is lifted? And guess what had the highest score? 31% of all America said, we want to be in church. People need fellowship. We were made to have assembly. We were made to be together. We need family. We need extended family. That's why church is so important. Because there are some people who don't have good families, natural families. And so church becomes their family because God the Father is the father of our house of the church, and we know that connection takes place. But um, uh, I, I, I know some guys, friends of mine, who used to uh, go and lock down sometimes when the cops were chasing them at night time. They knew the roads, and the cops were after them, and they would uh, turn the lights off and zap off in a side road, and the cops would go past them. And some people hide from different things during lockdowns. Uh, chased by gangs. I mean, I don't know if you've been chased by a group of guys who want to beat you up. I was, but I got out of it quite well. So, um, but my mother was the one I mostly chased away. But um, today I want to talk to you about what should we do during a lockdown? Um, what should we do during a lockdown? Well, we've prepared for it. We had time to know this was happening. 
Uh, everybody rushed to stores and overboard, of course. I heard of a guy who bought about $10,000 worth of toilet and, and sent it. He can't get it back. He's got to use it. He's going to be using that toilet paper when it's out of date. Don't know what toilet paper out of date looks like, but it could be a problem. However, in David's time, he decided he got this bunch of 400 people. They were his family. They were friends running away as well. And rather than sit there and just listen to the complaints of everybody, to what's going wrong, what the government's doing wrong, what King Saul was doing wrong, rather than listening to the complaints of the situation, he decided to do something else. He decided to train the greatest army of individual warriors that Israel has ever seen. So what are we doing during our lockdown? Are we taking from the Word of God what we do when things aren't going right and we're in an enclosed, an enclosed situation? Are we now taking advantage to do something positive? David went about, trained 300 mighty warriors. Mighty warriors. They could do amazing things. And if you know the rest of the story about David's army, they went and had amazing victories. Israel was free for the first time from tyranny and from the enemy and was able to set up a temple soon after that. So many good things were happening. So David decided that he would train up, train up warriors. There's another story in the Bible where in Judges chapter 5, you may have read this before, but it actually speaks exactly what was taking place today because you go into town and the town looks deserted. You go to the beach, it looks deserted. People are not living normal lives at the moment. Uh, it's getting back a little bit back to normal on the way, but this is what the Bible says in Judges chapter 5. In the days of Shammah, Gar, son of Anathar, in the days of Jael, the highways were deserted and travelers walked along the byways. Village life ceased. It ceased in Israel. It ceased. Village life ceased. The plaza's empty. Shops other than grocery shops are vacant. We can't walk in groups and have parties. People are having birthday parties and no one can celebrate. Village life has ceased. Funerals and they, you can't go and grieve. You lost one. Village life on the Sunshine Coast has ceased. Village life in Queensland, as we knew it, has ceased. And people are avoiding each other. They're walking in byways. Can't get together. You can't cuddle. You can't embrace, which is totally foreign to us as Christians, totally foreign to us as family. We love to embrace. Village life has ceased. Until, verse goes on, verse 7, until I, Deborah, arose, arose, a mother in Israel. Something happened in the midst of the village life ceasing where leaders, where people with an ability to do something rise up and do something. And the beginning of the chapter, chapter 5, it gives a hint of what Deborah did. It says this, Then Deborah and Barak, the son of Abanon, sang on the day, saying, When leaders lead in Israel... When leaders lead, it also means equally when locks are unlocked. You can be locked in, but a leader unlocks it. When leaders, when locks are unlocked, when the people willingly offer themselves, when people become volunteers, something happens when the leader rises up and imparts to people inspiration to do something about the situation and change the status quo. Your pastors, pastors around Australia, I and see anywhere. Dads in the homes, mums in the home. We rise up in the situation when life isn't the same. We have to bring a leadership potential, leadership journey for people to go forward so they get out of this place of not being stuck there. Deborah rose and unlocked leadership. She wasn't fearful. She knew there was Caesarea, the big army attacking Israel, but she said, God will lead us through. Vision, leadership was imparted to all in her region. And they saw the great victory where Israel went back to being free again. All through, the, all through the world, all through the Bible, leaders rise up and do something according to God's word and bring about a liberty. Mums and dads, business leaders, pastors, we grab hold of vision and inspire people God's way to bring about the answers. 
You see it happen in the Bible, and the Bible encourages us. Hey, something's happened. This is not new. It's new in our generation for such a long time, but it wasn't new to the times of the Old Testament when people were locked down through wars and that for long periods of time. And thank God we haven't experienced that. But something's happening that's given us this experience that's actually causing an uncertain future. Uncertain future unless God shows us a way. And God will show us a way through leadership. There's another big lockdown in the Bible. It's called time of Passover. to the book of Exodus. In Exodus, God had told Pharaoh, let the people go, you know the story. I'm not going to go through that story. But the last time he said, everybody, every father, every family, go and kill a lamb. We just celebrated that on Easter time, just recently. Go and kill the lamb and sprinkle the doorpost. Why? And then get inside the house and lock the doors. They were in lockdown. They were in lockdown. Why? Because something evil was passing over. Something evil was pass- Something evil is passing over Australia right now. Something evil is passing over a lot of businesses right now. A lot of marriages. I hear, I hope it's not true, but I hear that domestic violence has just increased dramatically because of people locked into the situation at home, don't, can't handle each other because they've never built wonderful relationships, and now the fight's happening. It's just tragic to hear that, and kids will be exposed to that. Imagine children stuck in a small room, and if they're locked in a unit, they can't get out, and just the pressure is putting on people's lives. And if we can be succumb to that through fear and become victims, or will we rise up and become Deborahs or Davids and rise up and do something? So what are we planning to do? And I hope you are planning things. I hope you have been doing things. But if you're still struggling with that thing to do, now's the time to start. These people were told in Exodus, dads, make sure your family are all inside the house. And when they're inside the house, these are the things you have to do with that lamb. There's an element of obedience required when we expect and hope God will work with us. God does not work outside of his word. His spirit and his word will always agree. The Spirit of God will always agree with what God says in His Word. If you're hearing things He should do, but it's against God's Word, it's not God. You could be just being inspired by some emotions to think, I should be doing this. First, wait. See if the Word of God gives you a hint of that. Is there an example of that? Ask your pastors, should I be doing this in this situation? Or should I be doing something else? But God says right here to the fathers, in home, at home, what are we doing? Dads, sit with the kids. Talk to them about God. Tell them about what God is doing and going to do. What an opportunity we have now, right in the fact that we're home so much, to be imparting to the foundations of our faith about the things of God. Dads and mums, I hope you're taking advantage of this time, being with the children, being able to impart to them, not being distracted by everything that's out there, is your TV the only thing speaking in the house? I hope not. Are the children on their computer screens the only thing that's speaking to them? I hope not. This is the time that you, mum and dad, speak to your children. Talk to them about your foundation of faith, where you got your faith from. Tell them the things God did for you and what God did in the past and where we're going. Because this was a great command that God gave all the Jewish people. He says, impart it to your kids and grandkids. Well, I'm living with my, my son and his, and his wife and three grandchildren. We love the fact that we can get together and share and have a praise and worship times at home, talk about Jesus, talk about our past, talk about their future, and inspiring them with a hope and a vision after this. Because God wants us to lead them. God wants us to rise up in the situation and be a Deborah and be a David. Train up mighty warriors for the future. Train up an army and lead them out to a hope and a future. When these Jewish people were stuck in the house at the time of Passover, what happened? They were obedient. The situation passed, and then God released them. And what did they get get released to? They were first slaves. They were all in poverty, and there was a lot of sickness around. But Scripture tells us that when the Jewish people left Egypt, they left with amazing prosperity. They left, no one was lame. They left rejoicing. They're left knowing there's a hope and a future. There's a promised land. These were the things they knew about 
and they began to experience because they locked themselves down. According to God, stay down there, be obedient, obey every rule. As long as it doesn't break God's command, if the government says do this, we'll do that, as long as it's not forbidding us to do God's word. They obeyed. And in the obedience, they didn't get hit by the death angel. The Egyptians did. The doors were open, and they began to leave. And they left bondage. Mum and Dad, are there bondages happening at home? Are kids struggling with things? Here's an opportunity by talking to your kids, bringing the house back to a dinner table where you sit down and share God. We can pray with your kids. We have the voice of God's word, a voice of mum and dad talking to the kids and loving them, selling all the disagreements, repenting of things we need to repent of, whatever, but establish a foundation in the family unit where your house your house, your home, your dinner table becomes the altar where God is honored. How you do it? Culturally, being of Italian descent, we have a lot of food. We love food. We love the pastas. We like all the things that are with tomato bases and that. We love them. And we do a lot of the cheeses and tomatoes. We enjoy it. Fruit, the sweets, all of that. And we have a good time around the table. Now, people who may not be of Italian, and there are some people in the world who aren't Italian, you know, everybody's an Italian or want to be an Italian, we know that story but reality is today you have an opportunity with your culture, your culture to have what you want to do in your family and bring about a foundation to bless your kids establish a culture, don't waste this time where children have to be home with you, don't waste it, establish it, train them up, establish a pattern which you'll have forever, my kids still love to come over on Sunday for the Italian feast they look forward to it. It's, it's, it establishes them and it brings them back to their place. Do you know what it's all about? The Sabbath. The Sabbath was something the Jews were commanded to rest and begin to think about how God delivered them and tell the kids about the stories of when they were stuck in a little hole in the house under the blood of the lamb they had killed and the death angel passed over. And then when they left there, they left with prosperity. They left there healthy. They left there with a future. See, in that house, they would have worshipped God. They would have been saying prayers. They would have been sharing with each other. They would have been expressing their faith at God, what God is going to do. They are right there in that place, establishing a foundation to connect the family for a journey into victory. Mums and dads, a time you can share with, the, with your family now to actually bring about the future. The future is still in Christ. God is already in the future. Our politicians have got no idea what's going to happen. No one knows naturally what's going to take place after the coronavirus thing lifts. But God does. No surprises to him and he's got it in his hands. We now celebrate that. Same situation. We come to church on Sunday. The most important part for a family is Letting yourself be connected at home and then celebrating with God's family on a Sunday. Why? Because we enter the same thing. We enter into worship. We enter into testimonies. We enter into God's word. We enter into the place where we're inspired by God's word and vision. Where we're going as a church, the community, we're going to touch and embrace. This is what it's all about. This is why church is so important. Not to be isolated, but to be connected. Yeah, we're isolated for a moment, but God let it happen. We've got mediums like today. From, on Facebook, from whichever medium you're picking this televised message up, you've got that right now. Why? That you can actually now progress into having fellowship around a TV set, around whatever medium you're listening to right now or watching. You have that happening, and God wants to honor you. Well, the Jews now celebrate that Passover every Sabbath. We celebrate it every Sunday. You're celebrating that today by the screen. And we should realize that this only happens, the community, the church, it happens well if at home we're doing a similar thing. So the kids say, Mum and Dad, what you do at home, Pastor Patrick and the church is doing here as well. They honor each other. They, they embrace each other. They talk about God. They love each other. They have communion. They, they break bread. And we have fellowship before and after church. We worship God. Hey, God, that's a, a progression. And children find a security about knowing there's generations and I'm on a journey from my past to home and to where we're going. It's the same 
situation is meant to take place. We have an opportunity in this lockdown to see God bring about vision, prosperity, worship, and health to all of us. Last scripture I want to share comes from Romans chapter 8 and verses 35. And are these scriptures that, that speak so loudly, so loudly when we're in situations we're not familiar with. Romans chapter 8, Paul, the mighty apostle, who knew it would be locked down. He was actually in prison. We write a lot of these scriptures, but not this one, I don't think. But he says this in Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. He says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall a cave of Abdullam? Shall a cyclone? Shall a mother chasing you with a stick? Because she'd be naughty. Shall a cops chasing you because you're speeding and trying to catch you? I hope you're not doing that. I hope you're not doing that. Who shall separate you? Shall tribulation, Paul says, or distress, or persecution, like Paul was receiving, he possibly receiving, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, coronavirus, or a sword, war. What can separate you from the love of God? And he says today, as written in the Old Testament, says, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, yet in all these things, what, do you go to, what does he go on to say? That we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. And all those things, you're going to conquer it. The cyclone, the famine, the pestilence, whatever has come at you, God is saying the love of God is going to make you Conquer it. Are you going to put your mind on the fear, the coronavirus, or are we going to put our mind and our heart on the love of God, the cross of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, where we demonstrated his love for us? In all these things, in all these things, you are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights or depth, nor any other created thing, anything else or created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm persuaded of that. I'm persuaded that every trial I've had, I would go to God. How do I walk through this, Lord? Because they know that every storm that's ever come to this world, it passes. Every rain, floods that ever come to this world, passes. Every flood that's come in this world, passes. And the Bible says if you built your house on the rock, if you built your family on Jesus, if you built your family on Christ's ways, when the storms come, when the enemy comes in like a flood, when coronavirus is attacking, when political turmoil happens, whatever, it will pass. Because Christ said, if you're built on the rock, your house will stand. Mum and dad at home, you've got the opportunity to build on the rock. Putting your children putting your future, putting their future on a house, in a house that's built on the rock. And then we go and fellowship with a church that's built its house on the rock. And that's why we can actually walk into our future trusting God. And I am convinced that nothing can separate me from the love of God because that's what he demonstrated when he died on the cross. When Jesus went to the cross is because he loved you he loved me I honour you I'm looking forward to seeing you face to face again one day and I just want to bless you all all those who belong to this church and those visiting or watching from elsewhere we want to bless you with the blessing of the Lord God wants you to know that he loves you more than anything else he has so much love for you and he wants you to believe him and trust him, and talk to him about it, for God's glory. Let me pray.
Father, we're going through a, a minor valley of weeping, of disappointment. But God will come through with joy. Jesus saw a huge valley, the cross before him. But the Bible says that he looked beyond the valley. He looked beyond that cross, the joy set before him. And Lord, I was praying that mums and dads will be looking to the joy of knowing they're closer to their kids. They've had more time to spend with their children, building those relationships, getting rid of all the things that were struggling. They can actually deal with it with God now. They have time to do it. And I pray that they'll take advantage of this time. What the devil meant for bad, we'll get good out of it, God. We'll see the blessings follow. Because above all else, you love relationships. You love family. You ordain family. You ordain church. And we want to be part of what you've ordained. Because that's going to remain for all eternity. For all eternity. So I bless these people in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Love you all and God bless. Well, that was an awesome word from Pastor Chad. I've known him for a long time and uh, you know, it really challenged us, you know. And, and this time of COVID, I really encourage you, you know, get busy with the things of God. Whatever you, you heard from our speaker, you know, uh, put some legs to it, uh, get there. And uh, so I encourage you, let us not be just a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. And I just want to ask you that uh, we want to see you on Tuesday night for our online prayer meeting and, and the Bible studies. We'll be getting in touch with you. Uh, be involved, rise up, serve the Lord, and let us use this time wisely. God bless you and see you next Sunday or on Tuesday or the other night. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.